Today we are going to veer into the arena of the morbid and talk about death. It's something most of us think about and fear, perhaps hoping that when we finally go, we drift away into the ether without much pain or anguish, a smooth transition into the great nothingness or whatever comes next. The most intense or chronic human fears are generally agreed upon, such as the statistically irrational fear of flying, and then more rational fears such as failure, rejection, loneliness, and even the possibility of a legion of arachnids marching into our home. Another great fear is sickness, and the onset of the pain or dis disability it might result in. But what kind of sickness could be so lethal we hardly have time to think about it? That's what we'll find out in this episode of the Infographic Show, diseases that will end you the quickest. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so that you can be part of our notification squad. Let's start with a disease that is perhaps the most feared on the planet following a slew of movies depicting its virulence and horrific symptoms. We are talking about the Ebola virus. Most cases have been in parts of West Africa, 11,310 of which resulted in death and of the 28,616 people that were infected. That was just in the period from 2013 to 2016. Cases of Ebola have been documented in Italy, Mali, Spain, and the United Kingdom. In the USA, four cases of Ebola have been recorded, resulting in one death. It's spread from animals to human, then further and easily spread from human to human. Infection occurs when a person who carries the virus transfers it to another through blood, bodily fluids, or secretions. The first stages of the disease are flu-like symptoms, which often progress to intense vomiting, liver damage, and as the movies like to show, internal and external bleeding. It can be treated, but some of those that have died have done so within days of the onset of symptoms. This next one could happen to just about anyone. Imagine after chowing down on your favorite seafood dish, within a matter of hours you were dead. This is a worst case scenario if you contract cholera. It's a waterborne disease that involves the fecal bacteria Vibrio cholera. It kills about 42,000 to 142,000 people each year, according to the World Health Organization. Estimates are made when cases are believed to go undocumented. In extreme circumstances, the quick loss of fluids and electrolytes could end your life within two hours of showing symptoms. If you survive the two hours, it could be a few more hours or days until you die of dehydration and shock. Cholera thrives where there is poor sanitation, but it's also found in undercooked shellfish that have traveled through infested waters. Those shellfish could then make it onto your plate. Cholera is rare in industrialized countries, but there are around 1.3 to 4 million cases worldwide each year. If you find yourself with severe diarrhea, drink lots of oral rehydration solution. Back to the stuff of nightmares, who gets scared when they hear the words rapidly progressive? That's a term often often used with necrotizing fasciitis, otherwise known as the flesh-eating disease. According to the CDC, 700 to 1100 cases occur each year in the United States, and it has a 26.6% mortality rate. The infection could happen after surgery, or more often when the bacteria infects an open wound, burn, or blister. If your body is already fighting another disease, or alcoholism, or you are generally frail, you may not have a strong enough immune system to take it, and so it can develop into something nasty. A quick image search will reveal that it pretty much tops the scale of nastiness. The CDC CDC says keep wounds clean, and if one does suddenly start to excessively throb and hurt, leading to vomiting and fever, get the fastest Uber in town to the nearest hospital. The CDC didn't expressly say use Uber. The most recently reported case was that of Edgar Savasar, an Estonian politician who lost a leg after being infected in Thailand. Sticking with bacterial infections, another quick end to your enjoyment on terra firma could be toxic shock syndrome, aka TSS. This infection has been known to make itself present in skin lesions or even in menstruating women using ultra absorbent tampons. Around half the cases affect the latter. Luckily, it only affects one or two out of every 100,000 women, and unluckily, some strains have a 5% mortality rate at best. It is very rare to die, but in 2014, a young British girl died in just five days after getting TSS from using tampons for the first time, according to the Daily Mail. If you don't die, you could lose a limb. Cosmopolitan published an article in which a 27-year-old American model lost her right leg below the knee, her left toes, and is still in constant pain following a bout of TSS. Losing a limb might might not be so bad compared to what might happen if you get meningococcal disease. This is a bacterial form of meningitis most common in the very young and also adolescents. It is such a virulent disease that the USA has implemented enhanced meningococcal surveillance systems to get to it fast if it occurs. Still, half of those that get it die if it's not treated. Of those who are treated, 1 in 10 to 20 will still succumb to death within 24 to 48 hours, and of those that survive, 2 out of 10 will suffer brain damage, loss of limbs, hearing loss, or other disabilities. The disease is a bacterial bacterial infection that affects the brain and spinal cord that starts with a fever, light sensitivity, a stiff neck, headache, and vomiting. The WHO says the strain called meningococcal septicemia is even worse. Most cases occur in Africa and resulted in 1,146 deaths on the continent in 2014. In the USA, there were 375 cases of meningococcal disease in 2015. It is transmitted from person to person through coughing, kissing, or sneezing. There are vaccines available, fortunately. The second most common form of meningitis is a viral meningitis. Most people will recover from this in a 
about 7 to 10 days. A more common disease, and one that's been getting some attention in the US media of late, is Chagas disease. The disease is caused by a blood-sucking parasite. While it's not deadly for most people, according to the CDC, 20 to 30% of people will suffer debilitating and sometimes life-threatening medical problems. Symptoms are many, but include the usual suspects of headache, fever, rash, body aches, fatigue, nausea, diarrhea, or vomiting. In more serious cases, it can cause death by heart failure. It kills around 21,000 people each year in Central America, South America, and Mexico, but according to the National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College of Medicine, there might be more cases in the US than is reported. There is no vaccine, but drugs can help you if you get infected. The CDC recommends using insect repellent and not sleeping in abodes made out of straw, mud, or thatched palm, where the bugs like to live. You might not heard of Chagas disease, but you more than likely have heard of the Black Death. This is the name given to the bubonic plague, pneumonic plague, and septicemic plague. It killed between 30 to 60 percent of people in Europe and 75 million people worldwide when it was at pandemic levels. We may associate it with the medieval history and images of bedraggled bodies piled up on wooden carts, but it's still around today. The most common, bubonic plague, starts with lymph node swellings called bubos. At its worst, four out of five died within 10 days. It's not so bad nowadays, but on reporting instances of the plague in New Mexico in 2017, the New York Times said, it is much less common than it once was, but it is no less serious. Pneumonic plague can be spread via air or water, but septicemic and bubonic plague are spread through blood poisoning after being bitten by fleas. According to the WHO, there are only about 650 documented cases each year around the world. The American Society for Tropical Medicine and Hygiene states that almost 22,000 cases were reported globally from 2000 to 2009, which resulted in 1,612 fatalities. During that time, the last available statistics, 7 out of 56 plague sufferers died in the USA. The New York Times reports that 1 out of the 4 cases of plague in New Mexico in 2015 resulted in death. 4 more cases of plague were found in 2016 in the same state, all those infected pulled through. Talking to The Guardian, a middle-aged mother and father from New Mexico who survived the Black Death said, We survived the plague. That's a big deal. The man had it worse. He spent several weeks in a coma and had to have both his legs amputated below the knee. His wife was told there was only a 1% chance he'd survive, but he did. Miracles must run in the man's family, as the report states his brother had won $27 million in the Texas lottery a few years before Black Death hit the family. We'll leave it on that almost happy anecdote and hope that everyone watching will never have to experience any of the diseases mentioned in this clip. If you already have or would like to share your knowledge about the diseases we discussed, please do so in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called Taboos Around the World. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!